Hey, my name is Jeff Zuckerson and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I want to talk about why mortgage interest rates are no longer going to go up. This isn't my opinion. This is the opinion of one of the biggest lenders in the UK. So we should listen to this and take note because interest rates, mortgage interest rates more so, they've been really volatile over the last year or so. In December 2023, the market was really slow. So what they did, the lenders did, in order to stimulate the market was to start cutting mortgage interest rates. And they did just that. In January, February and March, the market was busy. It was vibrant. Then lenders starting increasing rates again and the market slowed down. So let's talk about who this lender is, why they're so certain that rates will not go up again and why that could be good for you. So before we jump into this, as always, if you haven't done already, do subscribe to the channel over there and hit the bell notification and smash that like button, tick on the like button, do something to the like button. We've got a lot to celebrate this week. I'm on the left today. This is the last day I have in the south of France. And um, it's been a good week. We've had great weather here in the south of France all week. I've had some great time with my family. We've been been with Katie and my little girl, Amelie. But not only that, the Bank of England cut rates. Mortgage lenders cut their rates as well, including Lloyd's, who I'm talking about here. So the head of Lloyd's is saying, the CEO of Lloyd's is saying at the biggest mortgage conference out there that rates aren't going to be going up <coughs> again. Now, what happened, as I said, was December last year, the market was slow. The lenders stimulated the market by cutting rates. That cut into their margins a bit. Don't feel too sorry for Lloyd's. They made 1.7 billion profit this quarter, which was all right. Uh, so they're not too hit hard by it, but it did hit their margins. So April, May, June, and a little bit of July, they started creeping those rates back up in order to improve their margins. The problem was that slowed the market down again. And so a lot of people sat on the fence then. We had a lot that slowed down the market. It was the, the election. People wanted to see what was going to happen, who was going to win. It inevitably, Labour won. People wanted to see what their policies are, how that will impact them. Uh, and, and so that's something that they were waiting for. Then they wanted to wait for the Bank of England to actually drop rates because the belief is that when they do that, mortgage lenders will do the same. The problem with that one, though, is that lenders are saying they've already priced in these Bank of England cuts, so you might not see loads going down. And then there's lots of other things people want to see. Is the market going to drop in price? No one wants to buy at peak interest rates at the highest point in the market. So there's not lots of sellers in the market which slows down the market. There's not lots of buyers in the market. And transaction volume is down 25% at the moment. So lenders like Lloyd's, like Santander, like HSBC, <coughs> the only thing they can really do to get the market moving is to cut mortgage rates. And they've done that. And they've been doing that over the last few weeks. And so they're saying that they don't feel, <coughs> due to the fact that the bank is now on a cutting cycle, we've had one cut, we probably won't get a cut in September. We probably will get a cut again in November. It depends how many times the Federal Reserve cut. But the Federal Reserve made it quite clear this week in their meeting that they are likely to cut in September. They were really, really pushing for that and transparent. They wanted the market to know, look, everything being well, if the next job report comes good in America or close to what they expect, the next inflation data comes to what they're expecting, then they will be cutting rates in September. They've got pressure to not be political. Donald Trump is saying, look, you shouldn't be cutting rates before an election. But if it's the right time to cut, they need to cut rates. If the, the rest of the world is, the Europeans have cut rates, uh, the, the Swiss have cut rates, the Swedish have cut rates, the British have now cut rates, the Canadians have cut rates. The Americans, they need to get on with it if that is the right thing to do. So I think it's positive news for a lot of people here because some of us are sitting on the fence, including myself. I've just bought a property for Amelie, who you'll be able to see in one of the short videos on the channel. She was desperate to get in one of my videos on here. So I've made two little shorts with her. Um, so go and check those out in the next week or so so you can see 
who she is. Um, we bought a flat in Dorking in Surrey, uh, bought that on a bridging loan. We're looking to refinance that at the moment. And it's just a bit of a game, isn't it? Like, do we push it through really quick with the rates that we've got today? Or do we slow walk it, hoping that rates will drop in the next four, six weeks? Because the project's done now. We're ready to get refinanced on that property. Um, and it's, it's interesting to see what rate do we end up with? Because lenders are dropping rates, but they're not cutting rates at a huge speed at the moment. They're only cutting rates, not necessarily because of the Bank of England, more so just because the market is slow and they're trying to get business. But I think that Lloyds are right. I don't think you're going to see many upward increases with mortgage rates as we have done last month. Last month was crazy. Every few days, one of the big lenders was inching up their rates. Sometimes it was just 0.1%. Sometimes it was 0.25%. A few of them put it up half a percent. But that isn't the way to move the market forward and get more business. And so they've looked at that. And with the bank on a downward cycle now, we know, we can all be confident that rates in the next six months are going to drop again, aren't they? It might not be this year. I think likely will be November, but it might not. Um, but likely is that we will get some more rate cuts in 2024. That will give the banks a little bit more pressure. But what they ultimately look at is not the Bank of England rate. They look at something called the Sonia swap rate. That's where they borrow from, from big companies like JP Morgan Chase and these bigger banks. But if the market is slower, the JP Morgans of the world, they will reduce the swap rates in order to get more business. All of these banks, they want to be lending. They want the velocity of money to be quick because when they're lending, they're getting fees, they're making more transactions. They don't want money just sitting around. And one thing I saw in the data today as well is that credit card debt is reducing at the moment, which is good. So that means less people are in less stress at the moment. So people are paying down their credit cards, which I'm really, really pleased about. And also ISA saving is at record highs as well. So people are saving more money and that is good. With regards to house prices, that means that if you've got less credit card debt, you'll be able to afford more stuff. You'll be able to get approved for a mortgage a little bit easier. With ISAs going up, it means that people will have more deposits as well. So that's a positive sign uh, on that side of things as well. So I'm confident with what Lloyd's are saying. I don't think that mortgage interest rates are going up at least in the next year. Let me know in the comments what you think though. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Do smash like, that really helps me. Do subscribe and hit the bell. And I'm off to have a beer uh, and enjoy the rest of my time in France. I'll see you in the next video, which unfortunately for me, will be back in the UK. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.